In the Trinity, there is said to be three distinct persons, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and each of the persons is fully God. Now stopping there, it would appear that Christians actually worship three gods. However, nowhere in the Bible or Christian tradition does the Trinitarian concept become a tritheism, meaning three gods. God is always declared as one, which turns this doctrine into quite a mind-bender. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are said to share one nature, but the Father is not the same person as the Son, who is not the same person as the Holy Spirit, who is not the same person as the Father. They are three distinct persons in one substance, essence, or nature. Chronicles of Narnia author C.S. Lewis suggests that humans shouldn't be able to fully grasp a being that is beyond our three-dimensional world and uses this following example. If you are using only one dimension, you can draw only a straight line. If you are using two, you could draw a figure, say a square, and a square is made up of four straight lines. Now a step further, if you have three dimensions, you can then build what we call a solid body, say a cube, a thing like a dice or a lump of sugar, and a cube is made up of six squares. He's making the point that a world of one dimension would be a straight line. In a two-dimensional world, you still get straight lines, but many lines make one figure. And in a three-dimensional world, you still get figures, but many figures make one solid body. In other words, as you advance to more real and more complicated levels, you do not leave behind you the things you found on the simpler levels, you still have them, but combined in new ways, in ways you could not imagine if you knew only the simpler levels. Now the Christian account of God involves just the same principle. The human level is a simple and rather empty level. On the human level, one person is one being, and any two persons are two separate beings. Just as, in two dimensions, one square is one figure, and any two squares are two separate figures. On the divine level, you still find personalities, but up there you find them combined in new ways which we, who do not live on that level, cannot imagine. In God's dimension, so to speak, you find a being who is three persons while remaining one being, just as a cube is six squares while remaining one cube. Of course, Lewis admits we cannot fully conceive a being like that, just as, if we were so made that we perceived only two dimensions in space, we could never properly imagine a cube. But we can get a sort of faint notion of it, and when we do, we are then, for the first time in our lives, getting some positive idea, hmm. however faint, of something super personal, something more than a person. It is something we could never have guessed, and yet, once we have been told, one almost feels one ought to have been able to guess it because it fits in so well with all the things we know already. The doctrine of the Trinity is the most difficult idea in Christianity and yet one of the most fundamental. It instructs Christians on who God is, how He is to be worshipped and how God interacts with humanity. The Holy Trinity is easily Christianity's most difficult belief and many followers freely admit that they don't understand it. To help grasp this idea, some have sought the aid of illustrations from our natural world. The egg is one, yet contains a shell, egg yolk, and egg white. An apple is one, yet contains skin, flesh, and seeds. The problem with these illustrations is that if applied to God, it suggests that there would be parts to God, and that each person in the Trinity wasn't fully God. Another common example uses water, ice, and vapor, since they are three forms of H2O. Yet this too falls short since a molecule of H2O can exist as only one of these forms at any given time. Ultimately, every illustration breaks down at some point because the Trinity is simply unlike anything humans know. That the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are each God, yet God is one seems to defy logic. 1 plus 1 plus 1 can't equal 1, can it? So some have tried multiplication, stating 1 times 1 times 1 equals 1. But once we plug in the real data, this equation suggests that the three divine persons equal one divine person, which contradicts the belief. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are said to share one nature, but the Father is not the same person as the Son, who is not the same person as the Holy Spirit, who is not the same person as the Father. 
They are three distinct persons in one substance, essence, or nature. You might actually be surprised to find that the word Trinity isn't even found in the Bible. It was Tertullian, a 3rd century theologian, who is first credited with using the word Trinity, which literally means three in one. But centuries before, early Christians would have reflected on all the Apostles' blessing, which says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. While at the same time being aware of Old Testament readings like, I am the Lord, and there is no other, besides me there is no God. They had arrived at this Trinitarian view of God as the only way to make sense of one God in the context of what is written in the Old and New Testament.